Take it away, Tiger. Thank you. Can you hear me? Good. Right, so I'm not going to do a live demo um, for obvious reasons. Uh, but I am really wanting to talk to you about data-driven design and Unreal. Um, very exciting topic, uh, mostly because if you put the word data in front of things, people go, oh, technical, uh, which is fun, especially architects. We architects love data-driven design. Um, why? Well, because it really helps drive the projects forward. Right now, we are creating the smartest, most well-developed projects that have ever come out of history. And this is because of the data that we're gathering from across the globe and from across the different disciplines as well. We're collecting data on sustainability. We're collecting data on value engineering. We're collecting data all the way down to the minute details of facade development and design, where we can design facades to optimize for visibility, for energy consumptions. And so this is really just due because we've been using all the new advanced tools which have been coming into fruition. And the big question which we always were asking was, where does Unreal fit in this? Where does a real-time gaming engine come into the data-driven design aspect of Unreal? Um, and the obvious response is, well, it's a real-time rendering tool. It's great. We can use it to visualize things. And we can create gorgeous visuals. We know that. We see examples of it all the time and amazing videos of super cool speakers. Um, but with the introduction of VR and immersive technologies, we were like, why are we not? Well, this is a big opportunity because all the kind of data collection excludes one really, really important feature, and that is you. It's me. It's this waving man who I spent three hours making. Um, essentially, we are the people of the future who are going to be occupying these spaces. We are the people who are going to be working in the offices. We are the people who are going to be shopping in retail. We are the people who, if we're born in the wrong uh, generation, we're not going to be able to afford the housing. But regardless of which, it's important that the design should be focused around you. So how is it that we do that within Unreal? Well, we need to first of all look at a way to bridge the two realities. Because we have digital reality, which is very fancy. That's where we work. We love digital reality. We create stuff in VR. It's phenomenal. But we live in reality. So there really needs to be a commonality identified between these two spaces. Because we, we, this is us, we actually are there to build real things, real spaces that we're going to occupy. So that is what's important to us, is actually making reality itself. So to do that, we kind of started playing around. I wanted to just do just a quick research and development project, which we started on, called Project Insight. Um, not to be confused with the Marvel's Project Insight, which was, uh, I think if there's any geeks in the room, they'll remember this. Uh, he collects data to kill people. Um, ours is just a little bit friendlier than that, using Unreal. It's lovely. Uh, but similar principle is that we have this wealth of data. We need to be collecting it to make more informed decisions, not kill people, and drive the projects and the designs forward. So imagine a space where the space is designed around where you want to walk, what you want to look at, where you're going. There's no obstructions. There's no anything in there that kind of makes you feel uncomfortable. And to enhance the decision-making process, this is the most important thing. We're steering away from design theory and more into design fact, because we've got the data to suggest that it's true. So to do that, we kind of started all the way back with the digital reality drivers. What data is it that we can start to gather very simply from our Unreal models? And we can do this very easily with Unreal. It's got phenomenal tools because, again, it's the gaming engine side of it that allows us to do it. So we build this, these blueprints and codes which run seamlessly in the background of every single one of our experiences, whether we want to use the data or not, because we want to build up this vast wealth of it. And initially, we looked at just collecting four things, four very simple things, user position, target position, target mesh, and time. And I'm going to quickly just go over you know, why each of these are really important to the design process. User position, this is movement, where people move through spaces. So we're always tracking on where people are wanting to go, where they're not going, to help enforce maybe the common paths of travel. Where is that? Or the path of least resistance. Where are people stepping over stuff in order to get somewhere faster? At the same point, it allows us to clearly identify where the dead zones are in projects. Where are people not going? Or where are people going that maybe we don't want them to go? And how is it that we can modify that uh, urban master plan to change that. Target position is a very fun one. Um, this is basically monitoring the site data, where we're looking, what we're looking at. Um, and the most interesting thing about this that we kind of discovered very early on is that it's about the viewer angle. Architects love to look up. We just think everyone walks into a space and goes, oh, wow. 
No one does this. Normal people walk into a space, and I say normal because we're not normal. Normal people walk into a space and they keep everything eye level. And it's the data we're collecting showing us this, where looking up is very uncommon unless you're actually there to see something very special. And in malls, you know, we don't want to put too much into skylights because no one actually knows what the skylights look like in malls. But the more important thing we can do with the site data is we can actually use this in Unreal to hit it against particular object meshes. What is the meshes which are getting the most amount of hits based on each user experience? So we can identify very clearly very important parts of the project and parts which no one's looking at. But more interestingly, if we move that building, we put it somewhere else, we move the art sculpture or green wall, does it still have the same value? Does it still have the same attention? So we can then create smarter spaces based on that. And lastly, time. Time was an interesting one. We wanted to use it as a way of valuing how long someone spends in any particular zone in VR. What it actually showed us is that people spend very little time in VR spaces, which was really useful for allowing us to actually to create unique experiences within Unreal, really focused to get the most important data out of the VR experiences as possible, as fast as possible. But all of this is useless unless we can prove that it works in reality or there's a commonality in reality, that there's a coexistence, that people, the way that people move in one is the way that people do it in the reality as well. So to do that, we kind of had to look at a couple of reality drivers that we could use as benchmark comparisons against the digital ones. So traffic flow analysis, user engagement, target value, and time. Um, obvious one. Traffic flow analysis. This is very easy. We partner with some subconsultants, put up sensors in some Calus and Articale projects, and monitor people's movements throughout these spaces. And how does that then correlate to the digital movement? How does that actually look whenever you put those two data sets side by side? User engagement, we had this mad idea that we just give people Google Glasses type things that monitors where you're looking in real space. Um, lots of issues with that. But we ended up thinking that the smarter way to do that would actually be using the gram, I think as the kids are calling it. Uh, the gram, Tumblr, does that exist anymore? I have no idea, Flickr. These geographical uh, social media tags are really the way that we can identify what spaces with inside projects are important. You know, in this room, there's people taking selfies of big signs or whether or not it's a special roof or a special chair that they've seen. And again, attributing that to specific features in a zone and then seeing whether or not that compares to our data point cloud that we collected within Unreal. Very exciting. Now, time I always throw in here, um, just because what we discovered after lots and lots of digging is there's absolutely no correlation between digital time and time spent in reality. And this is due because I assume, based on the fact we don't have mobile phones in digital reality, we don't tie our shoelaces in digital reality, and the general distraction's not there, but there were still some data points that we were able to collect from the reality version and actually find the commonality in the digital sense as well. So that's really the important part of it because we're really then trying to take these two data sets and actually seeing how they speak to each other and what the kind of percentage of accuracy there is going from one to the other. Now, I know what you're thinking. The way that I move around in VR is in no way similar to the way that I would move around in a real space. And you would be absolutely right. Uh, there's just no commonality between me jumping on tables through lawns and on top of pools, because that's what you do in VR, compared to me in a real space, unless we've had a few drinks, in which case we're dancing on tables exactly the same. But that's why we invoke the wisdom of crowds, which is a basic sort of uh, strategy where we look at the idea that the opinions or actions of one person to another means absolutely nothing. But as a collective, as a crowd, whenever we start to look at this, we can actually start to bring some points of similarity across from it. So whenever we start to take not just data from five people or 10 people from a particular space, but we overlay this onto many huge data sets, is that we can start to create this heat map of sort of movement or target data within a digital space and do the same in reality and see what the points are where they actually start to conglomerate and actually find a way that they actually start to match. And this is what's really important, is the collection of the vast amounts of data. It has to be something which we're constantly collecting, constantly working with. Because the idea of this isn't just to enforce new designs. The advances of this is to actually use it in the digital twin modeling. If we have a project which is already existing and we build a digital clone of that, then we can then play around in the digital space, see how people react in it, or vice versa, play around with the reality data and use it to influence the digital space. Because as I said, the most important part of this is increasing the efficiency. And the more data we collect, 
the better it goes. And we can explore additional data drivers. I know there's certain people who are putting head uh, helmets on people and scanning their brains, trying to sense emotions in space. It's mental. Um, and all this data is really useful in actually targeting this crossover between reality and digital reality. Because at the end of the day, that's what we're looking to do. We're looking to create spaces based around you guys, about the way that you find comfortable living, the way that you move around the space, and what it is you want to look like. And the more that we do this, then the more advanced our designs are actually going to be. So we're continuing this down the line, and we're very excited with the direction it's going. Um, I realize I had a really short time to kind of go over that, but uh, if you see me outside of this, then please come and ask me some questions. I love talking about it. Um, but I'm David, and that's our lovely project. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you.